close that class. This is the 13-1 review notes. So we're wrapping up 13-1. We're not going to spend these notes talking about what you need for the quiz so much. That was in the warm-up and on the chart, which is a separate video. But what I'd like to do is talk about a few connections between ANOVA that we've been doing and the stuff that we did before. It actually does connect. And the connections are kind of interesting, but are not on the quiz. So the first thing that I want to talk about is that ANOVA is an extension of something that we've done before. It's an extension of difference between two mean tests. Difference in two means we did in chapter 10, where we did mu1 equals mu2 as our null, and what we're doing is we're adding more, so ANOVA has more than two means. And suddenly we changed to a whole different formula, and that was weird, but I want to just say that that formula actually is kind of like what we did with the difference of two means test. So a difference of two means test, we had a T was our test statistic, and the formula was x1 bar minus x2 bar minus 0, because we had a null hypothesis that said they were the difference was 0. And on the bottom, we had this thing. So I want to remind you of this formula that we saw in Chapter 10, and we reviewed it for the final, so it shouldn't be too unfamiliar to you, I hope. So let's think about this formula for a minute. How does this relate to ANOVA? Well, the x1 bar minus x2 bar is the difference between the two means of our two samples, which represents the difference between the two, two means and the population difference. So this is about the difference between the groups. Well, wait a minute. That kind of sounds like what we were doing with ANOVA because the difference between the groups is the good variation. And look how it's on the top of a fraction. This is the sort of thing that makes me happy when I see a connection between different things like this. Let's look at the bottom. What's the bottom measuring? Well, standard deviation is the difference within that group and the difference between the other group. But this is the standard deviation um, of the difference, which means that we're measuring the bad variation the difference within groups on the bottom. So we've been doing this good variation, bad variation all along. You just didn't know that that's what we were doing. And um, this is a lot simpler because there's only two of them. But this is actually, believe it or not, equivalent to what you would do if you were doing an ANOVA test on only two populations. In fact, if you do two populations and you find T, and then you do ANOVA with those same two populations, you'll know that you might notice, actually, I'm not going to make you do it, but T squared, if you square the T, you get F. And we've seen that before when we had the two difference of two proportions with Z, and we squared the Z and we got chi squared. Chi squared was a similar extension of the difference of two proportions. So t squared is the same as f, and you get the same p value. So if you did an ANOVA test on two populations, you would get the same exact p value and the same exact conclusion, and that's kind of cool. Or maybe I should say it's the same p value as a two-sided test, because ANOVA can't do a one-sided test. So just like with chi squared, you, you can't use it in a situation where you need a one-sided test. So that's the first interesting, I thought, connection between two things that we've done. Here's the second interesting connection. Let's take a look at um, some computer output that is in the PDF textbook. And so I'm going to actually put it up here on my screen, and you can look at it later if you want to. But um, computer output from page 15 of the PDF. And this was for the nitrogen versus phosphorus versus um, both versus neither, that situation. We've seen this data before. 
Um, and here's the ANOVA table that goes with that, so it gives you the SSs, which by the way, we calculated by hand in a warm-up, um, and you looked in for it, didn't you? And the MSs and the SSs, we've seen these numbers before. But I want to point out some things down here that are a little bit interesting. So let's think about S and R squared. Where have we seen those before? We've seen them in the situation where we are doing um, slope and predicting a quantitative variable from a quantitative variable. Now we're predicting quantitative from categorical, but we still can find S and we still can find R squared. That's interesting. I wonder how they do that. So I'll tell you what S is. S is 1.624. Oh, yeah. Told you what it was. And I just wrote it wrong. That's okay. Happens to be the square root of MSE. Let's think about that for a minute. So if I take on this computer output and I find MSE, which is 2.64, square root of 2.64. That's where they got the 1.624, so they rounded it differently, because probably the 2.64 was rounded. But anyway, S is 1.64 is the square root of MSE. It is, MSE is the mean squared error, or it's the squares of all the, how far off we are um, from the middle, the squares of the deviations from the mean. So this is a measure of your average error. for deviation from the mean for all the samples. Now we don't use it for much with ANOVA, but I wanted to point out that that's what it is. It's, it's the standard deviation of all the data put together. It's sometimes called the pool standard deviation. And that's what the calculator gives you at the very bottom of the ANOVA test, which, by the way, I should show you that also. Um, I have the data in my calculator still from that test. Actually, it would be easier to just do this, because I did the ANOVA test earlier. Um, at the very bottom, underneath all the SSs and MSs and all that, that's S. That's just S, which is the cool standard deviation. And we're not going to use it, but it's interesting that it's there. And then the other thing that's interesting is R squared. They do, they do capital R with computers, um, and there's reasons for that that I'm not going to go into. It's 27.65%. What in the world does that mean? Well, we know what it means with slope, right? Let's see if we can interpret it with um, ANOVA. So this is 26.5% of the very, I'm going to just write out the sentence that we've used before, of the variation in Y, I'm going to call it the response variable, can be explained by what we're doing here with our math. And it's not a linear regression this time. But in this case, it can be explained by whatever the explanatory variable is, which in this case is the treatment, uh, the different fertilizers that they used on these plants, because this was the one with the plants and the fertilizers, right? So the response variable is quantitative number of leaves on each plant. And the treatments are categorical now instead of quantitative, but that's okay. It was the fertilizers. So how much can we assume that the number of leaves is because of the fertilizers? We can assume it's only 26.65%, which is not very much. Oh, there's a lot more variation that's not being accounted for. But that's still kind of what we did with slope, except now we're doing it with categorical variables. And so another interesting thing that we could do is we could look at the numbers in the SS column here, the, the sum of squares, because remember R squared is based on sum of squares residuals, and sum of squares also happens here. So I've got this column of SS numbers that is the SS for the groups, the good variation, and this is the bad variation, and this is the total variation. I'm just copying these three numbers off of the SS column on the computer output. Um, so this is called SSG. 
and SFE and SFT, which is total. Now, if you add them together to get that, oh, that's very nice. Believe it or not, these numbers relate to R squared. So here's what I want to point out to you. If you take the good variation, 27.21, and divide it by the total variation, 98.39, you get something interesting. you get 0.2765 or so, or 27.65% of the total variation is good variation because it can be explained by the treatment. Does that make sense to you? Kind of cool, isn't it? That means that R squared is actually SFT over SFT. It is the good variation or over the total or it is the percent of the variation that is explained divided by the total variation. And I just find that really fascinating. That's what we've been saying about our, our R squared all along. We've been saying it's the percent of the variation that's explained. It's the explained variation divided by the total variation. That's what we're talking about. And the same thing actually happens with slope. It's just I didn't show you that table. I didn't show you the SS values for slope yet, and I'll do that when we get to chapter 14 because it, it happens almost the same way. Last thing I'm going to say is you don't have to write down, but down here we, the computer output spits out some confidence intervals. These are confidence intervals for the mean of each individual um, population, and it calculates those by doing the formula, we've seen this formula before, x bar plus plus or minus t star over, yeah, all of this we've seen before. Just the difference is they use the s, which some books call it sp, they use the s value from the square root of MSE for their standard error. In other words, the pooled standard deviation gets used to do the confidence intervals. We're not going to spend time doing confidence intervals for means because we've done them before. But I wanted to say if there's lots of, um, if there's lots of means, um, the pooled standard deviation is only used if we think that the spreads are about the same, which is one of the conditions for ANOVA. So that was a bunch of sidetracks that I thought were interesting, and I hope you found them interesting. Also, you don't have to know any of this for the quiz. I just thought it was interesting enough to say, um, here's some connections that might, you know, grow your brain just a little bit by hearing them from me. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. And um, the quiz is on Wednesday that covers mainly the stuff on the chart. This, you know, this is what's on the quiz. And the rest of today is for the practice quiz, which is on Desmos. So you'll see exactly what's on the quiz.